What does that say? Pewdie, PewDiePie, what does that say? I don't know what that sign said. <laughs> These bicyclists just cut in front of cars like they don't even see them. Another beautiful day here, anyway. So it's currently like 56. It's supposed to get up to 58 here in like an hour. So we will see. I apologize in advance. This is probably going to be a longer video because I feel like I got a lot to say. <laughs> So today we are going to talk about Boost. Um, not like stealing cars, but like forced induction. I guess I'll start out by the video by asking what is your favorite kind of Boost? Uh, if it pertains to motorcycles, I can't really say because I haven't ridden a boosted one. If it pertains to cars, I have to say, I probably prefer turbos. You got, you got your three kinds of boost. You got superchargers, which is roots blowers, twin screw blowers, and centrifugal blowers. And then you got your turbochargers, which use the exhaust gases. Why are you going so slow? And then you got nitrous, which is basically just shooting nitrous oxide into the intake. <laughs> now, a long time ago, 10 years ago, when I bought my GT500, I was all about superchargers. That thing came with the supercharger from the factory. It was pretty quick. Stock, with the stock supercharger, stock everything. It dynoed at like 465 to the wheels, which isn't bad for 2009. That was actually really good for 2009. That was one of the most powerful cars. Um, but then I got, then I did a little bit of upgrades. I did a smaller pulley on the stock supercharger and a uh, smaller or larger underdrive pulley, which is basically like the crankshaft pulley. So stock, it only had. Uh, about eight pounds of boost and after those mods I think I was at like 12 or 13 pounds of boost I think it was 12 and I was at 575 horsepower and um, it was like 560 torque I'll, if I have the dyno sheet still I'll put it up on the screen I don't know if I do though because it was <laughs> the, the guy didn't have any printer paper so he had printed it on a line piece of paper um, and then after that, you guys know, I got it all built up and stuff, and it's right now on 93 octane, it makes about 800 horsepower at the wheels, and torque is like 700 something, 750 or something like that, and on 91 octane, geez, this is all dried up, 91 octane, it's about 750 at the wheels, and like 715, 720 pound-feet of torque, somewhere around there. So not too bad. And that's with fully built motor, pistons, rods, everything. Um, ported heads, all the good stuff. And a Kenny Bell 3.6 liter supercharger. A lot of people with GT500s are actually switching to the uh, VMP uh, Gen 3 supercharger. I don't know why. It's, I mean, it's a nice supercharger, that's for sure. And the guys down in VMP are definitely uh, giving a lot of them away for for the videos. They gave one to Cletus, they gave one to Joyride TV. Who else? They gave a huge discount to uh, Autovlog. 
So that's why a lot of YouTubers are switching to the VMP, but I don't know, it's just a smaller displacement than what I have, and it would probably be less horsepower too. I just saw a Joyride TV's uh, video the other day. He was making like, he had a 3.4 Whipple, and then he went to like the 2.95 or whatever it is, Gen 3 uh, VMP supercharger. And so a smaller displacement, but he was making almost the same horsepower. It was like a 20 or 30 horsepower difference, which isn't bad for smaller displacement. I wish they made a bigger uh, supercharger, then um, I would definitely consider it. But anyway, back to the uh, subject here. My favorite kind of boost used to be superchargers. Also, I've never driven a nitrous car. But the thing I don't like about nitrous is uh, they say every hit of nitrous that you do, or every pass that you make, is the equivalent to 1,500 miles on your car. 1,500 miles. It's that hard on your motor. And also, if you're like street racing or something, once you're out of nitrous, that's it, you're done. You gotta rely on whatever horsepower your engine makes uh, naturally aspirated. So that's that's the one reason I don't like nitrous. Well, a couple reasons I don't like nitrous. People always claim too, oh yeah, it's uh, this much horsepower, but then it's actually only half that because the other half is nitrous that they're spraying. No, you can't claim, oh yeah, I got a thousand horsepower, but I'm spraying 400 horsepower worth of nitrous, so it's actually only 600. You can't claim a thousand, you're only at 600. Probably should have warmed up my tires a little bit. So back to the original story, I was I was obsessed with superchargers. I liked the instant power, turbos, people always seem to get bigger turbos than they actually need, and then they get like five or six seconds worth of turbo lag before they actually get any power. Now that's why I didn't like turbos, until, that is, that I got my truck. And my truck has the 3.5 liter EcoBoost and some I would say medium-sized turbos. If you took it off the truck and put it on a bike or something, it would look huge. But it's a, it's medium-sized compared to that motor turbo, which is perfect for it because it's just big enough to get you lots of power and just small enough to spool instantly. So now I would have to say that turbocharging is definitely my favorite form of boost. If I had to do it all over again, I would actually do both on the Mustang. They make, Helion makes a uh, kit that it goes two turbochargers underneath the car and those feed into the supercharger. So it's actually a compound boost. And that would have been the quickest way to get a thousand horsepower, but I had to go the blower only route and <laughs> just get a bigger blower and build the motor. Which isn't a bad idea. It just would have been um, a tad bit more horsepower. Probably about the same torque, but it would have been more horsepower if I had gone the turbo route. Because superchargers, because they're using the belt to drive them, it does have a little bit of parasitic loss, and what that is, it takes power to spin the supercharger, and you wouldn't get as much power as you would if you had a turbo, which isn't taking any power, it just uses the exhaust gas, which is pretty much wasted anyway. So for my 3.6 liter Kenny Bell, it takes about 100 horsepower to spin that blower, and then so if I had turbos, I probably would at least get 100 horsepower back. And the thing I'm starting to like about turbos more is that 
you can tune them on the fly. Like superchargers, you gotta take out the pulley and then um, switch out the pulley, and then you got to uh, change the tune, and then sometimes even change your fuel. You gotta put in race gas or whatever. Turbochargers, <laughs> most of the time you just gotta either change out the fuel if you're gonna add, put in race gas or whatever, and then. Um, just change the boost on your boost controller. And that's about it. You can pretty much change it on the fly. Oh yeah, everybody's out riding today. Hey. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is seriously the best bike ever. Anyways, how all of this ties into bikes, I guess, would be what kind of forced induction? Oh, I just said 2,800 miles. Nice. What kind of forced induction would you want on a bike? I know Kawasaki has had their H2 out for a long time, and that's supercharged, which I still don't know how they make the supercharger work on that. It's a mystery to me. <laughs> And I've seen on YouTube, I've seen a built one that was supposedly making 400 horsepower. But I'm pretty sure that had some NOS on top of it. Alright, we're gonna go around this guy. Oh, crap. just keeps on pulling. <laughs> I would definitely like to see um, some company come out with a turbocharged bike. Obviously no one's going to come out with an Idris bike because Nitrous, gosh this side of the road is so dirty. Nitrous wears down your engine so much faster. it can be dangerous like if it gets too hot or whatever you guys have seen it in movies let's see how fast these cyclists are going they're going like 50 <laughs> I think it's because it's running rich. I don't think anybody has ever, for the H2, I don't think anyone has ever changed out the supercharger for a turbo. I want to see someone do that and I see what the uh, horsepower difference is. That would definitely be interesting to see and I would definitely love to see for a motorcycle company, say Suzuki, if they want to keep up with their Hayabusa or something, make it turbocharged. <laughs> Even though the boosters aren't the best looking motorcycles, turbocharge it from the factory and see how that goes. Because the Kawasaki had the ZX14 and then really the only competition with that was the Suzuki Hayabusa. So I think if anyone were to do it, it would be Suzuki. Even they, they come out with like a turbocharged 1000, like 
the H2 is a thousand cc's so come out with a turbocharged 1000 I would definitely love to see that because car manufacturers are starting to do it now and turbocharging has just came a long way in the last few years like even engines have come a long way in the last few years like my GT500 the 5.4 liter maxed out that's talking full full bolt-ons full everything mine personally will make about 1180 horsepower at the wheels on race gas everything else and I've seen them up to the 5.4 I've seen it up to like 1600 horsepower I think that's the very limit that it can go now the 5.8 on the other hand the one that came out with in 2013 and 2014 that motor the very limit that, um, that I've seen that go to is 2,000 horsepower and that's Mark uh, Dover I think he's got that grabber blue uh, single turbo GT500 does wheelies all the time and he's got 2,000 horsepower that's probably the absolute max that that motor can do that 5.8 now the new third generation coyotes that's another whole nother story right there like those engines are so good now that they hardly need any boost to make any power like the third gen coyote makes what like 460 uh, horsepower stock and then even on like eight pounds of boost you can almost double that horsepower people are just throwing their whipples on there whipple um, has has a lot of there's a lot of whipple mustangs out there with that new third gen third gen coyote engine and even with the whipples and it's like the biggest pulley that they have they're still easily making 700 horsepower and that's not even a built motor that's just the stock motor and uh, I saw on Helian's website the guys who make those turbos they had their uh, their third gen coyote motor and they put their turbo system on it and they were at almost a thousand stock block and everything the, the new modular motors are just so far ahead of everything they make power so easily which is I'm kind of jealous of it actually <laughs> I wish it was that easy to make power on the 5.4s. This motor technology has come so far. So if I were to ever do it again, I would definitely go turbos and speak for LS motors I haven't ever driven a boosted one but uh, I've driven plenty of normally aspirated ones through like rental cars or whatever I don't know it's just the push rod engine is just such, such ancient technology they're really falling behind the modular motor need like way more cubic inches to make the same amount of power They can make good power, but you gotta do it with like a couple more liters worth of cubic inches. See if they got any good bikes. Hey, there's a DRZ. I like that. I don't know, LS motors aren't really my thing. I just know, I mean, there's a lot of diehard LS people and they swear by it. I 
I've raced a bunch of them in my Mustang and I don't know, they just can't keep up. I race Corvettes, supercharged V8s, turbocharged Corvettes. I don't know, they just can't keep up. I just saw a Challenger there and I just know, Hemis aren't really where it's at either. Hemis have the same issues as the LS motor. You need a lot more displacement to make the same amount of power. Anyways, that's my opinion. If you guys made it this far, let me know what you think down in the comments. What, what's your number one favorite type of boost is for cars? And number two, uh, what it is for bikes? And what you would like to see, who you would like to see make the first turbocharged bike from the factory. I know people uh, turbocharge boosts all the time and they got the little tiny turbos sticking out the sides over there. <laughs> and they make awesome power. This is this some kind of car show over here? Or just the Subi gang? Yep, it's all Subis. I think if anyone will do it, it'll be Suzuki. But anyway guys, that's all I got for right now. If you made it this far in the video, make sure you give the video a like and hit the thumbs up button. And leave me a comment, let me know what you think. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and have a good day. Deuces!